Okay, uh, welcome. So on the last example that I want to cover today is determining the end behavior. And what I decided to do for this video is rather than just looking at the graph determining the end behavior as it's maybe approaching, you know, a horizontal asymptote or it's approaching, you know, a value where there'd be no end behavior, I want to look at polynomials because in next chapter, this is something that uh, kind of comes up. So I want to make the connection right now for you um, as far as, you know, looking at this end behavior of the function. So therefore, when we get in next chapter, it'll be something that's, you know, rather um, rather a little bit easier to kind of understand. So here we have, um, actually I'm deciding just to work on only polynomials in this case. So by looking at the polynomials, we gotta determine you know, like where is the graph going? So um, I provided a link here for us to kind of follow so we can look at this. And I'm gonna kind of talk about what are the important things that we want to know from each of these functions. And the important things that we wanna look at when we're looking at the end behavior, obviously if it approaches a horizontal asymptote, that's something new. We'll, we'll talk more about how to identify horizontal asymptotes, so that's gonna come later. And then obviously again, if we have endpoints too, you know, that's something else we'll look at. So we're just gonna look at polynomial functions for right now. So these first two examples, what I want you to kind of look at is look at the powers or the, what we call the degree, I'm sorry, of the polynomial. You, that's gonna be the highest power. In this case, you can see that my power is four and or my degree is four in this case my degree is two and what four and two have in common is they're both even all right um and then also we want to look at the leading coefficient so these two have numbers negative four and two these doesn't look like they have numbers but they really do have a one and a negative one and what's important is to understand as far as the leading coefficient if it's positive or if it's negative now let's just go and take a look at what happens here so when i graph this function Okay. Again, what the end behavior is basically another way of saying it is like if you graph this function, well, what happens as this graph, you know, continues? So as we like zoom out, you can see the graph is continually to expand. It's not expanding that that much left and right, but it is continually doing it. And as we go out, this graph is going to keep that same behavior, which we call the end behavior. So again, to write the end behavior, basically what we're doing, what we're talking about is, you know, as my x values. Where is my, there you, oh, there you are. So as, oh, I wonder how I had it flipped over. As I'm reading this graph from left to right, right, let's just pick a point like here. As I travel to the right, that means as my x values get more and more positive, right, my x values are what we say calling approaching infinity because they're going more and more to the right. Well, what are my y values approaching? And you can see that my y values as, let's just pick some of these points here. As my y values, do, 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 so they go up, the y values go down, right? They go up. As we continue, you can see that these y values are going to be approaching infinity. Now, in contrast, let's look at this one. This one still has an even degree. It's not the same, but it's still even. Um, but now the leading coefficient is negative. And you can see here that it looks like the common thing with even degrees is the end behavior remains in the same direction. And again, you could like zoom out and say, okay, it's gonna continue that pattern, right? And that's the important thing that I want you to at least to derive, uh, to look at this, is when you have an even power, the end behavior is gonna continue in the same direction, either going both up or going both down. And determine if it's going up or down, we wanna look at the leading coefficient. If it's positive, the end behavior goes up and up. And if the leading coefficient is negative, doesn't matter what the number is, right? If it's negative, it's gonna be going down and down. Same thing with the like degrees. It doesn't matter if it's four or two or six or eight. It's still gonna have that um, same end behavior. And that's kind of the important thing. Now let's go and look at the odd. So as the odd, you can see here that the graph, as we kind of like, let's zoom in here. Let's pick some points. So as I'm kind of moving to the left, you can see my x as my x values are moving to the left, my y values are going down, then they're going up, and then they start going down again. And they're gonna continue going down all the way to infinity. And we wanna make sure that's the right end behavior, but you can see that that graph, as I go more and more to the left, this graph is gonna go further and further down, right? So we could say that as x is approaching negative infinity, f of x, which is like our function, is gonna be going down towards negative infinity. Notice the difference, um, oh, I didn't mean those will both be positive. Is that, is that how my uh, answer was? Both threes? Yeah, yeah, well, oops, didn't really make mean for them both to be threes. But it doesn't matter if it's three or if it's five or if it's seven. The fact that it's odd, when it's odd, the end behavior is going to be going in opposite direction, left or right. So, you know, in this case, it's going down to the left and up and to the right. 
And the reason being is because our leading coefficient is positive. If my leading coefficient negative, you can see it's the exact reverse. Um, now, as I'm going to the left, my graph is increasing. And as I'm going to the right, my graph is decreasing. So let's just go and take a look at this um, as some examples here as far as the end behavior. Um, so this one was positive, and the main important thing I want you to kind of, and we'll talk about this again, I just wanted you to kind of look at these graphs, and if you forget what this graph looks like, go ahead and plug it up as I write this in there. But I'm just going to write the end behavior in just a formal notation. We'll talk about limits um, for end behavior later once we get into more of like rational uh, like functions and so on and so forth. So in this case, all I'm going to talk about is, you know, as x approaches infinity, and if you remember this first graph, the graph was going up. So we could say f of x, which is like the y values, is approaching infinity. We'll zoom in here. And then I can say as x approaches negative infinity, which basically means as the graph is going to the left, my y values, or f of x values, is also going up, not negative. And let's just check that again one more time. So you can see, let's do that first graph. So you can see as x is going to the right, f of x is going, uh, as x is going towards infinity, f of x is going towards infinity. As f of x is going to negative infinity, f of x is going towards infinity. And remember, x going towards infinity means like going to the right. x going to negative infinity means like going to the left. And f of x going to infinity is basically the way of saying going up. And f of x going to negative infinity is like the same way going down. So let's look at the next example. So the next example, as I'm going to the right, I'm going down. As I go to the left, I'm also going down. So let's write that um, in our notation. So we can say, you know, in this case, as x goes towards infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. So you can see here the f of x's are going in the same direction. Over here, the f of x's are going in the same direction. And that is all because of the powers are even. And when it's negative, you can see it's going out in the negative direction, right? When it's positive, you can see it's going down in that positive direction, right? Positive, positive. We'll just write that down. All right, so let's go and look at the odd ones. Uh, I'll just pull up the graph one more time just to kind of remember. So the odd functions here, we can look at this and say, all right, as it's going to the right, it's going up. As it's going to the left, it's going down. And then if I make that negative, now as I go to the right, it's going down. As I go to the left, it's going up. So I'll just write that in your notation here. So first one was as x is approaching infinity, that means it's as it's going to the right f of x is approaching infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is approaching negative infinity. And then the last one was the, basically like the exact same, but it was flipped. And so that is as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches infinity. So it's really important for us to just kind of remember and take note of this uh, kind of end behavior. So therefore, we can kind of see that really all we care about when we're looking for the end behavior of our function uh, is looking at the degrees as well as the leading coefficients. So therefore, we can kind of remember exactly what is going to be our end behavior. But for right now, we have graphing technology. So that is all we're going to be concerned about. And that ends us for the day on characteristics of function.